Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and today we want to talk about when do you use one of these things, a DMX splitter? When do you use a DMX node? When do you use a bigger DMX node? Because ultimately the answer may not be as simple as it seems. Let's dive in. So in its simplest form, we grab one of these devices, like a DMX splitter, we used to grab these all the time, right? We still do. When you want to take DMX, maybe out of your console or something like that, and you want to split it to go in multiple different directions. DMX splitters also may give you the ability to have three and five pin DMX outs or something like that, okay? Or all threes are all five. So it may also be an adapter between the different plug types, right? So the question becomes, now we also have DMX nodes. A lot of times, if you're using a PC software or even a more modern console, you're going to output your DMX over Artnet or SACN. These are the networked DMX protocols. And when you do that, you're going to something that's a node. And that's when the game changes, because now, You've got a node, like here, this is a Netron EN4 from Obsidian Control Systems. We like these a lot. Um, and you've got four ports on this node. If it was the back of the console in the old days, that would be DMX Universe 1, 2, 3, and 4. But when it's a node, you have ultimate flexibility. So the question becomes, so these could all be Universe 1, these could all be 2, 3, 4. So the question then becomes, is a DMX splitter even useful anymore because at the end of the day there's there's kind of few ways right that we could work this out in the sense that we could take a dmx splitter come out of our node from our or our console right dmx into the splitter dmx out of the splitter this is an inexpensive one the intech d split that we've recommended for a long time they're good and go to our different fixtures right we could do that but we could also we've got four ports here we could also do something like this. And for example, the Nitron EP4, the uh, cheaper version that doesn't have the screen and the knob, has four ports. And it is actually, when we look at the cost, it's gonna be less money than like a two port node and a four port node. So instead of a two port node going to a splitter so we can get four ports, now we've got, you know, say, or say a single port node to a splitter, four ports out. Now we could just have a four port node that is either less expensive or the same price and simpler than a node and a splitter. And so that's where things get interesting. Okay, so in this modern world, as we go forward into using more networked DMX in all sorts of setups from the smallest to the biggest, splitters become usable, but less applicable. Why is that? Well, let's talk about it. So, um, you know, when you get a splitter like this, this is an inexpensive splitter, the Entec D split. It's been, I think, 133 for a long time, or it used to be 124, now it's 133, but it's still under $150. There are other rack mount splitters under $150. What are the big pros of a splitter? Well, they're simple. You plug in your stuff and it works. It splits, there's no configuration at all. Some splitters offer some basic configuration to maybe have two universes in, and you can choose which port goes to which, but it's very simplistic. Okay, very quick, very easy. The downside is any cheaper splitter, um, right now any splitter under, say, $300, I'm just throwing that number out there, it's a rough, it's rough. Well, trust me, don't, don't write in the comments below and say, oh, I know what the splitter above, below that. Um, but any of these cheaper splitters, while they can be good quality, they're not going to pass RDM information back to your console. Meaning that if you're trying to remotely go ahead and through your console, reach out to this light and change its DMX address or its mode, it's not going to get through the splitter because this splitter is only one way. It's not bi-directional. And so a lot of times, more often than not, you get into a situation where if you want to have RDM control of your fixtures, then it's gonna make sense. It might be less expensive than getting an RDM splitter 
just to get a node that offers RDM, okay? Like these Obsidian Control System 1. In fact, let me grab something super quick. Because as I was saying, you get something like uh, a node, okay? And this is a splitter node from Obsidian Control Systems, kind of that middle ground. But, but say, for example, we're still back here, okay? And we're here, and we've got, again, you know, a two-port node. Then we go out and say this is not an NTEC D split, say this is a node that has RDM. Maybe we need two of them, okay? Now what we're trying to do is get just, you know, eight ports out, so two universes into two splitters. Eight ports out, it's a little more complicated, so if any of these devices lose power, um, you're, you're losing DMX somewhere, right? Um, you know, and at the end of the day, now you've got distribution of DMX to all your lights. Okay, whether that be uh, splitters can be for simplification of wiring or because you're starting to get too many fixtures on a DMX chain. That's where something like this kind of goes in the middle. This is a splitter node. So it's two ports splitter or it is ethernet and it can be a two port node and it can do a lot of other things. And so at the end of the day, what I like to say to people is, um, is the answer to always go and use DMX splitters? Definitely not anymore. I think we can say that concretely. But it doesn't always make the most sense financially and for ease of setup to go with all nodes either. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. But remember, there's always the middle road. And we've still got devices on the market like this RDM10 from Obsidian that gives you the best of both worlds. Gives you the ability to use it as a basic DMX splitter, just dial it up, lock it in, done. Or use it as a two port node with eight output ports, selecting on either of the eight what universe you want them to go to. So this could literally be nine ports of universe A and one of universe B. It could be five and five, it could be six and four, any combination, okay? Um, and so when you're thinking about this, you really just do wanna think about, okay, where do I need universes? How many splits do I practically need? And of course, if you do like a lot of live events, this could vary depending on the live event. And then begin to ask yourself, okay, now that I know that, how can we find the right combination of nodes, splitters, or both together or in one unit that helps solve the problem and still get us something that's the best value for our needs? If that sounds interesting to you, if you're like, okay, now that got my wheels turning, maybe I do need a node, maybe I need a splitter, maybe I don't know, then hey, head over to learnstagelightinggear.com. You can fill out our contact form, you can fill out a quote request, and if you're like, okay, I need a node or I need this many ports, maybe I need a splitter, um, I want RDM, I don't care about RDM, let us know. And if you're looking for a solution of any of this stuff, we're glad to help. We've got gear experts like myself and others happy to help you find the right stuff and get it going so that you have it so you can make great lighting. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. I'm David and we'll see you in our next video as long as you're subscribed. Thanks.